Hey, what's up guys? It's the last Party here, and in today's video, we've got a community replay. In this community replay, we're doing a dual gameplay since uh, these two players were playing in a division, and they both had the ability to record their gameplay. So, uh, before we get too in-depth into the video, uh, if you'd like to send us a community replay, send it to biaworldofwarships at gmail.com. Please include the screenshots and the post battle results or and the replay itself as well as a short description we try to get all of the replays in to our videos um and as well as uh trying to get people that aren't featured or haven't been featured a lot in as well so if you're afraid you don't have an amazing game just send it in we'll try and see what we can do and pick whatever we like the most now, I do want to mention one other thing. Uh, if you are sending us a replay before the patch hit, unfortunately, it will not work. We are not able to record it. Uh, so, again, if you did send us a replay, unfortunately, it will not be... Uh, we will not be able to record it. So, with all that out of the way, we're looking at two guys, as I said before. Uh, the first one in the Udaloi, he uh, I've actually done something kind of different so let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys like this uh these like dual uh gameplay where i got one screen up in the uh i've got one gameplay up in the top left hand corner and then the main gameplay uh in the middle let me know if you guys like that but in the udaloi we have i h uh sasum i h sasum uh I think that's how you pronounce it. And then in the Lion, the 2-9 British Battleship, which this is the first time I'm seeing gameplay of this. Um, so I'm going to kind of take everything he does with a grain of salt, assuming he's doing Lion-like things. But he, uh, that person is uh, I Shiku Shikawa Hayoto. Again, just apologize for the mispronunciation. But again, he is in the lion. So, uh, in a lion, I do know for a fact that one thing that you do do in a lion is shoot a lot of HE. Uh, the British battleships are known for their British, uh, their British fire chance as well as their British alpha damage. Um, and when I s and when I say British fire chance, uh, or I when when I say alpha damage, I I, I should have said. Uh, he penetration because like uh the germans they get uh, a quarter of their he uh pen damage uh that's how much their he does um i believe that's how it works or something like that um but they they have a very good fire chance either way um and they are able to pump out these large amounts of he salvos uh, like you saw on that, uh, I believe it was a Moskva. And then I'm sure we'll see it again here on this Bismarck. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get to display that. Only one penetration. So, the British battleships are good at shooting HE. So, although I have seemed to notice that a lot of the time, uh, switching to AP on broadside cruisers is actually very effective because they do have a shorter fuse time which means on lightly armored targets um, and in comparison to battleships cruisers are somewhat lightly armored they can actually uh, have a better chance of getting a citadel just due to the fact that uh, when the AP shell penetrates it detonates a little bit sooner so you actually get those nice juicy citadels a little bit more often um, but when in doubt HE is not a bad choice uh, it, it, you're always gonna do damage with the HE and a lot of times a lot of the ships there aren't as many light cruisers around but like a Neptune you could probably HE citadel him I know in the Conqueror the Conqueror has insane HE -H pen values you can definitely citadel things like a Neptune and I believe possibly a Minotaur as well um, so that's another plus. The other thing about the uh, Conqueror is since you are shooting HE, that means you become infinitely more effective against 
destroyers. Most of the time, people shoot AP in battleships. Well, I, sh I probably shouldn't say most of the time because I feel like that is not necessarily a true statement. Uh, but a lot of times, I'll be shooting um, AP at destroyers, and I'll usually get overpens. The thing with HE is you don't really get that. You pretty much always get full pens, or you just break shit, or you do both. Uh, and that's an, uh, something about British battleships and their strong HE characteristics that make them uh, very strong against destroyers as well. Um, so that's that's something that you guys have to watch out for if you are playing against uh, British battleships or you're trying to grand line. So, uh, right here, they their division went to C. Uh, there was nothing really contesting them from going to C. I'm actually a little bit surprised how far the Udloy went out, uh, but he seems to be doing some work against this Friedrich, uh, getting him out of the fight. Uh, it's not that big of a deal than Udloy's on the B line, uh, just because he can... I don't think he's running speed boost, but in the event that he does need to get back to the enemy or the fleet a little bit quicker, he can do that. And at the end of the day, he is a Russian destroyer. So so far, not that exciting gameplay. Just a lot of uh, kind of sitting back and just seeing what the enemy team is doing. It's more of a brawl fest, so to say, uh, this far into the game. Uh, but shortly here, we are going to be switching over to uh, the Udloy's perspective um, and see some gameplay of that. Tash going to get spotted, and let's see if we can't do some nice HE pen damage. Like I was saying earlier, bing bada boom, bing bada boom, I like to go boom. Let's see, tracking the target, shells out, how many hits? Three hits, 3,500, not too bad, uh, it's almost kind of to be expected with uh, HE shooting on a destroyer. The other thing too is I, I kind of suspect that while these are the smaller caliber uh, guns on the line, uh, he probably does have Adrenaline Rush, so looks like he was running a slightly... Uh, he was able to get shots off a little bit quicker, and... Uh, and yeah, he he, he uh, makes himself a little bit more dangerous by running Adrenaline Rush, which is, I, th I think, still a pretty underrated perk, uh, ca uh, Captain Perk these days. I don't think a lot of people value the... Uh, value of Adrenaline Rush. It's a very effective perk uh, and it can really help you out uh, between... It, it really can decide whether you win an engagement or you do not. So I reckon we're gonna start shooting. That's one thing that you do a lot of in Russian destroyers, especially the higher tier ones. You are so much more of a a uh, gunboat than you are a torpedo boat and to be honest this was kind of self-evident at this point I hope uh, grinding through the lower tiers and even the mid tiers they are more of a uh, more of a gunboat than a torpedo boat the only exception would be I believe the uh, Minsk which I believe can actually stealth torp as well as Ognavoy um, so, and the Ognavoy is part of the secondary line, which the Udaloi is also a part of. So, uh, in the Udaloi, I believe you do get 8 km torpedo range, and if you do decide to go with a stealth build, which looks like, uh, we have forgone here, then you can get your detection to sub-8, but it looks like we are just going with a classic gun build, um, probably, yep, definitely, uh, survivability uh, expert at, no I think it's survivability expert um, and then probably uh, AFT and since we are running defensive fire uh, I would also assume that it is safe to say that we are also running uh, manual fire control for anti-aircraft armament 
this point, we're just going to try and kill these low health targets. Hopefully finish them off. Here, I would be switching to AP. Uh, it is a broadside cruiser. Even though it is uh, a broadside cruiser, you would think. Uh, you probably can't do much against that Hindenburg. Uh, you'd actually be surprised. The Russian destroyers are able to very easily penetrate the superstructures of, uh, of cruisers like that. And even destroyers, when something like a gearing gives broadside, you can actually switch to AP and uh, start punishing him because he is quite thick. Um, so that, that is just something to keep in mind uh, when you are dealing with enemy destroyers and cruisers. So at this point, uh, th it's 3v5, so it's not looking too good. The enemy ships and the en enemy team are, of course, a conqueror and at least a Zhao. Uh, it, it looks like the Friedrich was able to stay alive, and it looks like a Fletcher and possibly a Gearing are also still alive. Uh, versus a Noodley, which uh, granted has full health, and a Lion that is, I believe, he's at about half health. Um, so, it's not going to be easy, and now it's a 2v5, which makes it all the more difficult. Again, as I was mentioning earlier, the uh, nice witherer there. Uh, I was mentioning earlier that the Udaloi can get decent con concealment for a Russian gunboat, but it's not anything to be comparable to a Fletcher or a Gearing. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get in close enough to actually be able to, uh, to outspot him. Uh, the only thing you could do is YOLO rush that Fletcher or Gearing, uh, but in that case you are still putting yourself at a disadvantage because he can see you, he can open up on you at any point in time. Uh, he can launch torpedoes at you which will make you turn a certain way and that can lead to you either dying outright or you just uh, having to maneuver in such a way that he can get a few uh, free volleys on you and he can... Uh, he can uh, push the fight back into his favor uh, rather easily. So that is one thing you have to be careful of in the Udaloi. But in a situation like this, you probably don't have much of a choice. If you're losing on points, you do have two caps, but uh, you are going to have to take the risk and uh, just deal with it. We start smoking up here. It looks like we're going to start burning this Conqueror down. Uh, and... His buddy in the Conqueror is currently fighting, looks like to be a uh, Friedrich de Grossa that's in smoke. So it looks like one of the destroyers is over there. So we're just going to burn this guy down. Uh, we already got two fires. Looks like we're going to be shooting at the bow. Um, this is not a bad idea. It looks like the Friedrich, or the Conqueror rather, has no damage control or he is waiting to use his super heal. Uh, so at this point, you could probably start shooting AP at the uh, superstructure. However, as soon as he turns in, uh, like he is doing now, then HE shooting at the bow is not a bad idea. Looks like we accidentally went out of smoke a little bit too much. Good recovery there. No harm done. At this point, you're within uh, 7 kilometers, so torpedoes are going away. And as I say that... There they go. And again, two fires on them. Switch to AP. This is good play. I like to see this. Uh, it is sometimes hard for uh, DDs and cruisers alike to hit uh, conquerors or British battleships in general consistently with uh, on their upper armor belt because they do have a slight... Since their hull is pretty low in the water, uh, it is kind of hard to actually differentiate between their their uh, upper armor belt and their main armor belt. Uh, of course, their main armor belt you cannot pen with AP unless you're something like a battleship, but you can penetrate their upper armor belt, but again, it is rather s uh, a small area for you to hit. One torpedo hit, uh, we dodged some shells, and we're going to start shooting at this Friedrich. Our lion buddy is... Oof, he's seen better days for sure. Uh, Friedrich is going to go down here soon, hopefully. 
get a fire on him. The secondaries are coming my, his or our way. Uh, and the conqueror, or the, I keep saying conqueror, the lion ends up killing the Friedrich the Gossa. At this point, it could be beneficial to stop uh, and stay concealed, wait for that smoke, but it looks like we are not going to do that. Um, the only reason I say that is because uh, destroyers are a lot harder to hit than, let's say, a uh, battleship. But unfortunately, we go down there, and the line is going to finish this game off. And we will see if he can't pull this off. Super heal goes away. We've got a Fletcher spamming him at B that is getting some very good penetration. Pen penetrations. Uh, so even though you can't uh, actually do a lot of uh, AP damage to the upper armor belts, you can actually get a lot of superstructure damage, which uh, can aid you in uh, setting fires like you've done here, or just doing raw damage. So the enemy conqueror is super healing, looks like, and so is uh, the lion. Uh, he managed to get Confederate and High Caliber, um, and we'll just have to, uh, and Witherer, if that wasn't uh, already apparent. Again, I since I have not played the uh, the Lion a lot, or I actually haven't played it at all, I haven't seen a lot of gameplay of it either. I don't know what situations are good to be shooting AP, I haven't mastered that yet, uh, but Intuitively, I would have thought their shooting at the Conqueror that was turning uh, a little bit more broadside would be a, a good time to shoot AP, but uh, you guys will have to let me down to know in the comment section uh, if you have played the Lion already. Shell's going out on the Fletcher. Get a nice Salvo 7, uh, I believe a 7.8k. So very nice Salvo there. If I was this Fletcher, I would just stop shooting. He's got the lead. Yes, we do have two caps, but with only 40 seconds remaining, we cannot win for sure. Uh, there's just not enough time. There's, the point difference is too big, so we have to kill this guy. Will we? And we will. That puts us over the top, and with only 25 seconds left, and oh boy, this is going to be a very, very close one. Can we make it? We are burning. We cannot repair. And it looks like time is going to run out. And this is just about going to do it to finish off an absolutely spectacular game of all accounts. Well played, you two. Looking at the screenshots here, looking at 226 damage, two ships killed, uh, Witherer, Confederate, Fireproof Dreadnought, uh, High Caliber, and Arsonist. And uh, I got a lot of credits, 482,009k XP for a buddy in the lion, Shiwaka, I think that's how you say it again, apologize for the mispronunciation, um, but again, very well played in the lion, I commend you sir. Looking at the team score, we're look, looking at 2450 and 2407 for the lion and Udele respectively. Rightfully topping their team, this should have been a loss in all accounts. Uh, but coming back from a two to five, uh, two to five uh, ships, that is something to be very proud of. Good job to you guys again. Uh, I wish we could have a uh, dual solo war. That would be pretty cool, if you ask me. Looking at damage distribution, ninety-one uh, k, almost one and a half ti uh, times a, a witherer. And then just a lot of HE shell damage, 133k, 2 point, I believe that's a 6 million potential damage, and 164,000 uh, damage received. So double his his uh, his allotted HP. Udoloy finished with 202, got one assisted base capture, uh, a, a lot of shell hits, 300 shell hits, uh, two ships killed, as well as a wither, confederate, and high caliber for him. A decent RNG with 13 fires, 434,000 credits, 3,792 XP, uh, and two base defense. And we got one torpedo hit on that Conqueror late. So, again, well played, sir. Uh, 106k damage, 
uh, from fires. Um, most of the fire, most of the damage was from the fires and floodings, and then 80k from high explosive. Uh, a mammalian shot his way, and well, it was it was a spectacular game. If you guys liked this video and you liked how I differentiated the two games, please let me know down in the comment section. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, but anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Please have a wonderful day.